today we're going to talk about 1D defects. Um, so uh, we've been looking a lot about point defects, you've been looking at Kruger vink notation, but now we're going to look at uh, a type of 1D defect that we're going to call line defects. Um, and line defects and 1D defects, one of the most common ones that we're going to come across are dislocations. Uh, and specifically, uh, again, dislocation is just this linear or 1D uh, line defect, which involves the translation of one part of the crystal with respect to another. But one of the key things is, um, actually, this is different from a disclination, which involves rotation with respect from one part to another. So dislocation is translation. Disclination is the rotation of one part with one, with the rotation of one part with respect to another. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm dealing with a little bit of cold. Um, anyways, we're going to be dealing with two types of dislocation primarily in this class. Um, so we're going to look at edge and screw dislocations. So you can see an example of an edge dislocation below here. So an edge dislocation is basically this extra half plane of atoms that's inserted into a perfect crystal. So here you could see I have perfect crystal here. So perfect line, perfect line. But now I have this kind of like, this is, would be a perfect line, but I've got this extra half plane. This is that extra half plane right here. So I have this extra half plane of atoms that's inserted and terminates within the crystal. So this is our extra half plane of atoms. You see, it doesn't continue, but everything else continues along here. So let's kind of erase it. Edge dislocations are pretty easy to kind of see. Um, so this would be my extra half plane of atoms. And when you see dislocations are commonly noted, or will note will denote where a dislocation is by kind of drawing this little this kind of notation for an edge dislocation. So this kind of denotes where our extra half plane of atoms are. So when you think about where the atoms are located, you can see that near an edge dislocation, you have pretty compressed, you know, uh, structure here. But then at the bottom of the dislocation, so we have really compression here, and we have open space tension at the bottom. So you know, atoms are really kind of pulled around here. But anyways, there's extra space around here now for atoms to kind of sit in and move through. So you'll get uh, carbon interstitials kind of moving throughout there. But anyways, we're getting a little bit off topic, as usual in this class, uh, with our love of material science. Uh, a screw dislocation is a little bit harder to visualize, but um, you can kind of see that a screw dislocation can be formed by applying some uh, applied shear stress. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the shear stress here. So you can just kind of see if I kind of shear material like this, you know, basically shear, you can kind of create a... Uh, a, a screw dislocation. So there are lots of different types. Uh, there's going to be some uh, key differences between edge and screw dislocations. Uh, one, this screw dislocation motion will be perpendicular to our Burgers vector, but we're going to kind of see it move uh, to the applied force, actually. Um, there's wedge, there's twist dislocations, um, but there's lots of kind of different ones, but we're going to focus again on edge and screw dislocations in this class. Um, and the key idea here is for a dislocation, there's going to be a dislocation core, which is what we saw right here. So this was our dislocation core for edge dislocations. And there's going to be where there's this largest displacement of atoms from the ideal site, and they're concentrated along a dislocation line. And we are going to describe dislocations using a tangent vector, T, a Burgers vector, B, and then we are going to create a Burger circuit. Um, so the tangent vector is basically tangential to the dislocation at any given point. So it basically goes along this. The Burgers vector is going to be B. That is going to be defined in reference to our Burger circuit. So next time in class, we're going to kind of figure out, we're going to determine if we have an edge, a screw, or any other type of dislocation using this Burger circuit notation. So we'll go over that kind of uh, formalism next time. See you in the next video. Thanks.